Okay. So remember, for trinomials, we want to do something that's called the AC method. Now, I'm going to do the whole AC method once, but then I'm going to show you that if you don't have a number in the front here, you can shortcut the, pro the process, okay? But only if there's no number in front, okay? So the AC method tells me that I have to take this number in the very, very front and multiply it by the number in the back. So that would give me just 21, positive, because this is positive times a positive. And then I would have to also consider what's in the middle, which is a positive 10. And I've got to come up with these two magic numbers. Now, the list of numbers that add to equal 10 is infinite, infinite. I could say negative 90 plus 100 equals 10, right? I could come up with, a, I mean, an infinite number of ways to add to get 10, okay? It's not just 1 plus 9, 2 plus 8, and all that, or, yeah. So, the shorter list to consider is actually the factors, because there's only a certain set of numbers that will multiply to give me 21. So, that's where you want to look for your possibilities of these magic numbers, okay? Now, the only way to guarantee that you have all... And this is going to come in handy when this number gets really big because some of them get really big. Like you get 144, 200 and something. Yeah, and so how do you know? I mean, there's, I'm pretty sure there's a pair in there that you just didn't think of and that's the one. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so the way to know you have every single possible combination is to actually take the square root of that number. So if I come over here and I do the square root of 21, let me write the number down square root oops of 21 I get well the calculator just says square root of 21 so I'm going to hit the decimal button and it's 4 point something 4 point okay I don't care about the decimal part all I know is that I need to keep going down this list until I get to that 4 okay and then now I'm going to start thinking and you can use a calculator for all of this. What's 21 divided by 1? 21. 21. And isn't it true that 1 times 21 is 21? Yeah. 21 divided by 2 is a decimal, decimal number, yeah. which means this is not going to give you a nice factor. Okay. okay. What about 21 divided by 3? 7. Is 7. And isn't this true? 7 times 3 is 21? Yep. 21 divided by 4. Again, a decimal. Yeah. So 4 does not work. So that's it. Those are the only possibilities you have is 1 and 21 and 3 and 7. Which one of those looks like it'll give you 10? 7 and 3. 7 and 3. So when I come here, I'm going to put 7 and 3 and 7 and 3. And those are my magic numbers, right? Yes, ma'am. So, and I don't even need to mess with the signs because there's no negatives, right? Everybody's right. positive? Yep. Okay. Now, this is what happens to those numbers. You notice that these numbers add to give you 10, don't they? Yeah. So what you can do is you can split this middle term into those two numbers. So this is y squared plus, you cannot put 7 plus 3 by itself. Because then how would I get 10y, right? Yeah. In order for you to combine these terms, they have to match, right? They have to be like terms. Yeah. So if your result's going to have a y, then each of these guys have to have that y. So that when I combine them, I get the 10y. Right? Three apples plus seven apples will give me 10 apples. Right? And then if we do the same grouping thing that we did before, this side has a y in common. If I take it out, I get y plus seven. Bring down my plus. Three in common. Take that out, I get y plus 7. They have the y plus 7 in common, and then I have y plus 3 left over. This is it. Okay, however, because there was no number in front, look at what happened to my answer compared to my numbers. Isn't it just a positive 7 and a positive 3? Yes, ma'am. And don't they have in here just y plus 7 and y plus 3? Yes, ma'am. So once you have those magic numbers, if there's no number in front, you can jump to the answer, okay? 
But once there's a number in front, you cannot jump to the answer. And I'll show you when they give us a number in front, because I'll jump to the answer and then I'll check it and you'll notice it doesn't check out. Okay. So let's try the next one and then I'll let you try more on your own. Okay. So if I take this little visible one and I multiply it times the 18, we get 18, but then I've got to combine to give you negative 11. So 9 and 2. Mm-hmm. 18. What's the square root of 18? Just to make sure that if we don't see that, it's 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6, 4 doesn't work. Okay? So then, yes, you said 2 and 9 is going to give me 11, right? Yeah. Okay, so I could put a 2 and I could put a 9. This has to be the same thing. Some of has got to be negative. Right. Well, in order for them to combine and give me a big negative, both, both, both of them are going to have to be negative. Yep, and in order for them to multiply to give me a positive, they would both, both have, have to, to be, be negative. negative. Yep. Okay? Yep. So that looks like it's going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this term. So I'm going to have x squared in the front negative 2x and negative 9x so that when I combine them I get the negative 11x or actually we don't even need to do that we can shortcut right we know that when there's no number in front we don't have to do this step we can just say it's going to be x and a negative 2 and x and a negative 9 So we don't have to do all the factoring part, the grouping part. We can just shortcut. We know what it's going to look like. And it's true. If I were to take an x out of this in common, right, the x in common, I would get x minus 2. If I took out a negative 9 here, I would get positive x and negative 2, right? So you just shortcut if there's no number in front of the x squared. So try the next one, and you can either use a shortcut or you could do it the log way. It doesn't matter. You'll get the same, the same answer. But try this one: the y squared plus five y minus six. And I'll give you a hint. Okay, this back guy tells you two different things. This back guy tells you. Um, whether you're going to add your magic numbers together or whether you're going to subtract your magic numbers. It also tells you whether the two magic numbers are going to have the same sign or whether they're going to have different signs. Just FYI, when you see a 5 and a 6, that is the most common place to make an error in the factors that you choose. Did you get it? No? It's not a long list, right? Because it's just six. You're gonna use you're gonna use two and three. Nope, that is wrong. Two and three do not subtract 
to give me six. Really? Or to give me five, I'm sorry. But they add to give you five. But look, this thing tells me whether or not I'm going to be adding the numbers or subtracting uh, the numbers. Okay, I see what you're talking about. And it's about. minus, it minus, which means my number should be subtracting so to give me should, five. Yeah, so one should be a positive, one should be a negative. Uh-huh. Okay, so let me rewrite. And two and three don't work yeah, two when three. I subtract, because when I subtract two and three, I get one. Okay, let me, right? let me redo this. Not one. five. Well, it's the most common one I'm people sure make a mistake. Six. I have calculus students that mess this one up. I mess it up sometimes. <laughs> it's just the most common one. So, you're going to break that down if you said five, five. What's the square root of six? Should be what, three? Okay. Two points something. Which means when I break it up, I only have one times something and two times something. Yeah, what are those numbers? Two times something is not going to work. Two times three is not going to work. And what's the other factor, the other pair? One times six. Uh huh. So, you're going to say. X squared is X plus six, one Y minus six Y minus six. Let's see. So we know it has to be one and six, one and six. Yeah, it's going to have to be Y squared plus one Y minus six Y minus six. No, because if I use plus six, I mean, um, you can't use plus one. Because if you use plus one and minus six, that's going to give you a negative five, and you need a positive five. Okay, so turn around plus six minus one. one. There you go. Yeah, that's what I was asking you earlier. You got you to make sure you, 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 you have to, They have to work out. They have to work out. Yeah. And now they do, so I can shortcut. What's the answer? Y minus one. Y minus one. And then y plus two. I don't know why I put an X. See? I do that. Yeah, that's what I put. <laughs> and then Y plus six. And check it, right? Y times Y, Y times 6, negative 1 times Y, and negative 1 times 6. Do these guys give me positive 5Y? Yeah. Yes. So we got it. That should be the answer. But the most common thing whenever you have 6s and 5s is whether to use the 1 and the 6 or the 2 and the 3. Because depending on the signs, there are some times where you will use the two and the three. But then, again, depends on the signs, you may use the one or the six. Because both of them will give you five, right? And it all has to do with this guy right here. If it's a minus, that means you need to be subtracting the two numbers. If this back guy is a plus, that means you should be adding the two numbers. And even more than that, if the back guy is minus, that means the numbers are going to have different signs. And if the back guy is positive, then the numbers are going to have the same sign. Okay? So this back guy tells you a lot about those magic numbers. Looking at this one, let's just not do the problem, but just think about what is the back guy telling me. The back guy is telling me two things. What is one of them? It's going to be, it's going to be a negative. One of them is going to have to be a negative. And the second thing? Is that those magic numbers are going to have to get subtracted from one another. Okay? So which one of these pairs subtracts to give me three? One and four. Mm -hmm. And then which one will have to be negative so that I end up with the negative four. three? The four. So y squared minus four y plus mm -hmm. one y minus four. Or you can just shortcut because there's no number in front. You could just get y in a positive one and y in a negative four. four. Right. And if you want to, check it out. Now, y does it make squared. a difference which way you put these? No. All right, then both. Remember, it doesn't matter. Two times three it's is six, six yeah. and three times two, two is six. Is six. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. And I'm just double checking that this comes out to negative three y and it does. So it's good. So the, the cool about these is once you get those magic numbers, you can just get the answer. It's the other ones that are harder, okay? Now this one's a little bit different, but it is very, very similar. Notice how here we had x squared in the, or y squared in the front, so we had y and y in the front, right? Over here we had x squared in the front, so we had x and x. Here we had y squared, so y and y. Here we had y squared, so y and y. Look at the back. The back had no 
letters. So these guys had no letters, right? right? Yep. No letters, no letters. The only thing different from this one, I'm still gonna do the number business the same, but notice I'm gonna have to have X's in the front of my answers, and I'm gonna have to have Y's in the back of my answers, okay? So essentially when I'm finished, it's gonna be X and X and a Y and a Y. I just have to figure out what sign and what number, what sign and what number, okay? So I still have to do the funny business with the numbers. Let's see, I have negative 39. And let me see, what is the square root of 39? I think it's six point something, yeah. So I gotta go all the way down to six. Okay, it's gonna be x squared plus 13xy minus 3xy minus 39y squared. What's the final answer? Oh, I didn't do all that. Did I did a shortcut. Oh, okay, I didn't do the shortcut. What sign did you get for three? Uh, negative. And what sign did you get for 13? Uh, positive. Positive. So that's it. You put negative three and you put positive 13. Oh, because it ain't got no number. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. You just have to remember if there's y squareds in the back, put the y's in the parentheses as well. Bring mm -hmm. Same thing here. You've got x's in the front. So you already know what the answer's gonna look like. Y is in the back. You just need to figure out the sign and the number. The sign and the number. So what numbers do you think it's going to be by looking at that? For what? For, uh, for this one. For that? Oh, man, that's going to be uh, 12. Uh -huh. This is no, I was going to say uh, it's for 7. Uh -huh. so multiply to give me 12, but add to give me 7. Four times three. Four and three. Yeah. And then this is plus, so that means they have yeah. to be the same sign. Yeah. And if this is positive, well, that's what that's sign they got to be. Yeah, they're going to be positive. You got it. Yeah. Same thing right here. You got the X's in the front. You got Y's in the back. Now, what about this number? What numbers multiply to give me nine, 18? Nine, and minus yep. to give me 7? Yep, seven. 9 and 2. But this means they have to have different signs, right? Right. So this is going to be the sign That's of your plus, bigger number. Yeah, plus 9 and minus 2. Plus 9 and minus 2i. Yep. You got it. And you can always check them, but I don't check them. So that whole process goes a little bit faster after you get in the hang of it. But you have a default, right? You can do the chart, figure it all out, and make it make sense, right? Okay. So there's those words. <laughs> Factor completely. So don't tell you what to do. You just have to go for it, okay? But remember I told you, the first thing you want to do is see if there's a GCF. That's what you should always be doing. I just took it for granted that all those didn't have a GCF, okay? Be five, here. five is the GCF. And if I took the five out from the very beginning, yeah. what would I have? You could have V squared minus 35. Not 35 anymore. Uh, minus 7. Minus 7. Plus 10. Plus 10. Yeah. And then this is a trinomial, which means you have to try to factor that. So I would just, on my final answer, remember that there's supposed to be a 5 in my final answer. Now notice, I have V's in the front, right? But I don't have any letters in the back. So I'm not going to put any letters back here. But let's go find the magic numbers. This 1 times 10 is 10. So let me list all my factors. And three does not go in, that's it. Yeah, I'm gonna say two and five in that answer. Yeah, two and five add to give me ten, right? But it's gonna have both of them probably gonna have to be what a negative. Correct. Negative. Negative and negative. Can I say something to you? Yes. And this is just for the whole class. Mm -hmm. You won't get offended? No. Hey man, your comment you made about coming in and getting doing, you know, the movie. I have it. You the best, you the best. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. So that should be it. And then can I check that? I can check yeah, it, right? Check that by now you can choose which ones you want. There's three guys to multiply. You have to choose which two to multiply together first, and then take the third one and multiply it in later. Which two do you want to multiply first to check this? You want to multiply the front two or the two big guys? Oh, okay. I see. Which two do you want to multiply together first? It doesn't matter the order. 
do the first two to get it out the way. It's okay. Five v then that means I have to distribute, right? Yeah, so 10. I get 5v minus 10, yeah. and then that has to still get multiplied by this guy. By that, right. Right. So right. then that gives five, me. 5v Minus 25 feet? Minus 25, yes, ma'am. Minus, minus 10 feet? And then yeah, plus 50. 50. Plus 50 and do these guys give you negative 35 feet? Yes, ma'am. And yes. that matches the that top, matches right? Up in the top. So we're good. We did it correctly. Okay. What about the next guy? You try it. I'll let you try. recognize that this could have still been factored and you'd have to do it because the directions say factor completely okay 
But it's easier if you take them out from the beginning because then you don't have these huge numbers like 6. So what in the world is 6 times 72? Holy moly, 432. Like to sit there through all the factors, right? Even the square root of 432 is ginormous, right? 20. You'd have to go from 1 all the way to 20 to think of the magic numbers. That's too much. That's why it's important. Remember on that sheet of paper I showed you, always try to do the GCF first. So that way it shrinks your numbers down a little bit and they're not so crazy. Okay? But then here, I can do that because then the numbers that multiply to give me 12 but subtract to give me this invisible 1 would be 4 and 3, right? Yeah, okay, I see. And then they'd have to be different signs and so that so one has to be the bigger. Yeah, so so like negative okay. and positive. positive. Okay? Yeah. And you could always multiply it out to check it, but yes, this should be... Should so once be you get this area right here, you pretty much got it. Yeah. The only thing is, is now we're going to jump into something a little bit different where there is a number in front. Okay? And all that means is that once you get the magic numbers, you can't shortcut to the answer. You have to do what you've been trying to do, which is split the middle guy and then do all the grouping. You have to. You can't get away with it. Okay? And I'll show you what happens if you try to shortcut it. Because if you start getting in the habit of checking your answers, especially on the test, you're going to want to check your answers, you'll notice right away that it's the wrong thing, okay? So if I do my numbers 3 times 14, 3 times 14, I get 42. And the square root of 42 is 6 point something. So I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that way I know I have them all. 1 times 42 is 42, 2 times 21 is 42, I don't know about 3, 42 divided by 3, oh, yeah, that's 11, 14, I got it from that, right? <laughs> um, 42 divided by 4, no, I get a decimal, 42 divided by 5 is also a decimal, and then 42 divided by 6 is 7, so this is all of them, now notice, it's going to subtract to give me 19 subtract to give me 19 so which one of those subtracts to give me 19 21 mm -hmm. and then again not only does it do they subtract but if this is negative they're different signs uh, aren't yeah. they? Yep. and that one is the sign of the bigger number so immediately i know that that two is going to have to be a positive and the 21 is the one that's going to have to be the negative And if you try to cheat and say, oh, it's going to be positive 2 and negative 21, just taking the numbers, what happens when you do x times x? You get x squared. Yeah, x squared. Do you ever get 3x squared? Nope. No. So this is not, you cannot shortcut these guys. So let's go ahead and do the grouping. So I'm going to chop it in the middle right there. What does the left-hand side have in common? X. X. So that leaves me with 3x. Plus 3. Oops. Yes, plus 2. Bring your minus down. down. Good. You have 14 and 21. So what did I say? You got 7 in common? Mm -hmm. But it's a negative 7. Negative 7. So, so you're going to have 3x. Positive 3x, three three yeah. Three and minus 2. Nope. Negative plus 5 and negative. Plus positive 2. Plus two. And do they match? Yes, so we have x and positive 2. two. And then x, x minus 7. You got it. So you just can't shortcut it. Okay? Try the next one.
would you get? Two by plus three. And then? Yep, you got it. Did you get that? I don't know. I don't even know where y'all got that. Where, where, where y'all okay. get that at? From? Let's see. Multiplier numbers, what do we get? You get 30. 30. And so then we need to come up with, what's the square root of 30? Square root of 30 is 5 point something. So let's go through all of this. And we have 30, 15, 10. I don't even know if 4 works. I don't think it does. Nope. 30, yeah. And then 6. So which of these will add to give me 13? 10 and 3, right? So we do 2y squared. And then they have to be the same. And since this is positive, they'll both have to be positive. Okay? So plus 3y plus 10y, and then that plus 15. Chop it in half. You guys have, these guys have y in common. Bring down the plus sign. These guys can be divided by 5. So we get 2y plus 3, which matches 2y plus 3. And then that leaves me left over with y plus 5. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Make sure you're using this. This tells you whether to add or subtract, and it tells you whether the signs are the same or different. Okay? This one will always tell you the sign of the bigger number, but if they're the same, then that means they're both plus, right? Okay. We have more. They change the problem type on you, but it's literally the same process. So we do our multiply, right? Four times two is what? Eight. And so then the square root of eight is only two point something. So this is as far as I can go. It's going to be one and eight, two and four. What am I doing with these numbers? Adding or subtracting? Subtracting. Uh huh. And I've got to get seven. So you're going to have negative eight. I mean, negative eight, one, one, negative eight. Yeah. Mm hmm. I'm going to have a negative eight y and a positive one y. Yeah. And that'll work. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's see. Um, yeah. So chop it. What do these guys have in common? No, that's not the greatest. Four. Four y. Four y. Sorry, four y. So then you got y minus two up in there. Mm-hmm. Bring your plus sign down. And then we've got nothing in common. So put a one. So y minus 2 is the same. And then 4y plus 1. 4y plus 1. And you can always multiply it out to check it. I won't do that just because it's going to make the video longer, right? But you can always foil it out and make sure that you get this exactly. Is that 2z squared up there? At the bottom of the next one? Uh-huh. Sorry. It's my ugly writing. 2z squared plus 13z minus 24. Let me see, square root of 48 is 6 point something. Uh, 16? Yeah, 16. Mm -hmm. This one, no, no. And this one is 8. So, are we adding or subtracting this list? Subtract. So, subtract to give you 13. One positive, one minus. So Not you positive get, one. So, you're going to say 16 times 3. Uh-huh, these guys, right? You got it. Yep. So and so then, now this is they're different, so but have, that's the sign of which one? The bigger number? The bigger one. So, you're going to... Put positive 16 z's and then minus 3 z's. That'll give me 13 z's, right? Now, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. I could put the negative 3 z in the front and the positive 16 z in the back, but they do have to have the correct sign, right? So it doesn't matter which one you put before the other. And if I chop it here, what does the left side have in common? Uh, z's in there. Uh-huh. More than z's. 2z. 2z. Yep. Z minus 8 in parentheses on that side. Z plus 8. 
Z plus A. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Z plus A. Bring down the minus. What does the other side have in common? Uh, we're going to say three is in common. Sure. And then that negative would make them both positive, right. won't it? Right. Yes, ma'am. So you got Z. Z plus A. Right, the bigger sign. Uh huh. So if that was negative 13, it would be negative. Then it would be negative 16 and positive 3. Mm -hmm. Because this one tells me they have to be different. Nobody's going to watch that video. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all. It says problem type three now. If you notice, I mean, nothing has been changing from our process, right? Yeah, getting bigger. It's all the same. Yeah, the numbers are getting bigger. That's true. I don't know. So, oh gosh, these are bigger. And 41 is a prime number, which means I definitely can't factor something out. So, unfortunately, I'm just going to have to roll with punches. So, let's see. 18 times 21 is 370. This is where that square root thing is definitely going to come in handy because that's so what you're about to do, take the square root of 370. Uh-huh. And I got 19, which means I've got to go all the way down to 19 in order to guarantee that I have every single combination I could wow. have. That's the only way to make sure that you've got them all and you didn't forget anybody on accident. Okay? Now, I'll show you when to stop because we may not have to go down all the way to 19. If I get so far on my list and all of a sudden I have another number that's down here, I can just stop. So we'll see how far it goes. So 378 divided by 1 is obvious, right? 378 yeah. divided by 2 is 189. Divided by 3, 126. Divided by 4, that's a decimal. Divided by 5 is not going to work. Divided by 6 is 63. Divided by 7 is 54. Divided by 8 is a decimal. 54 work. Divided by 9. Well, what am I supposed to do with these numbers? No, 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 You're supposed to add them, right? You're supposed to add them, you're right. And those won't. Those won't work, you're right. 54 won't. Um, 10 is definitely not going to go in, right? Because it doesn't end in a zero. 11 didn't work. Okay, so you want to stop. It's 12, you can't. You, they have to fit this description. They have to add to give me 41. They have to. I can't stop until I get that pair. And none of these oh, are going to add oh, okay, give to give me 41. They're all too okay, big, right? Too big. Yeah, yeah. So you got to keep going. Uh, That's a decimal. I get 27. Maybe that will work. Let's see. What's 27 plus 14? That's 41. Yay. And I don't have to keep going, right? Wow. So <laughs> I already went really far, but still. So then this, if they have to be the same sign, and the bigger one has to be plus, well, then the other one has to be plus as well, right? So 18x squared plus 14x plus 27x plus 21. Now we can chop it in half. These guys can both be divided by 2 and an x. So we get 9x plus 7. Yep. Bring down my plus sign. These guys, I think they can both be divided by 3. three. Yep. And then we get 9x and a plus 7. So then we have 9x plus 7. And 2x plus 3. So yes, the numbers are bigger in these problems, but the method is not changing, right? It's still all the same. So let's see these guys. 21 times 4. 
84. Square root of 84 is 9 point something. So I'm only going to go to 9 if I need to. Because these numbers are doing what together? Subtracting. Uh-huh, to give me 8. Yep. So this is obviously too big. This is too big. That is still too big. Still too big. That's not going to work. What about those? Yep. Do those subtract to give me 8? Yeah, if you take, uh, add 14, positive 14. Positive 14 and, and negative? negative mm-hmm. Okay. So then let's do that. 21x squared, positive 14x, negative 6x. And then chop it in half. A final answer. 3x plus 2 and 7x minus 2. Correct. And again, you could always foil it out to check your answer if you wanted. Okay. okay. So nothing's changing. It's just different numbers, basically. Now, you do have one topic in there that literally says AC method. And so the only thing here is that they want to know how you split it before you give them the answer, okay? So you do everything exactly the same. The problem is 4x squared plus 16x plus 7. And it gives you these four options. Notice the difference. This is all the same. It's just you have a plus and a plus. Here you have a plus and a minus. Here you have a minus and a plus. And then here you have a minus and a minus, okay? Now, if I do need to use one positive number and one negative number, Either one of these can be correct. It's just how did you order them, okay? So you can have either of these as your answer. Just make sure you put the numbers in the correct spot with the correct sign, okay? So let's look at ours. Ours, I can tell you right away which one of these boxes it's going to be, even though I don't know the numbers. It's going to be the top box. Yeah, because they have to be the same, and then the big one has to be positive, right? right. So we automatically know it's got to be that one. We just don't know what those numbers are. What's 4 times 7? 28. 28. And the square root of 28, like 5 point something. Oh. You can use 14 and 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to add to give me 16, right? So then, you know, the 2 has to go here and the 14 or 14 and 2. Would it make a difference? No, ma'am. No. So either way you write that, it'll still be correct. There's two ways it could be correct. But when I group it, that part I do need to do. So 2x plus 1 and 2x plus 7, or vice versa. Yep. It doesn't matter which one's in, which bubble is in the front. So you could write the 2x plus 7 in the front and then the 2x plus 1 in the back if you wanted. Okay, as long as the whole bubble is there. Okay. So it's the same thing you've been doing. It's just they want to know what your middle step was, right? When you split it, what did you have there in that line? That's all they're asking. So they, you just pick which one is applying to yours because of your signs, and then fill in the numbers, okay? This is no different. It's got its own other topic, and it doesn't even need it because everything comes out in the grouping. So magic numbers. 5 times 6 is 30. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I've got 30. I've got 15, 10. That don't work. And six. Which ones? Three and ten don't work. So back to give me seven, yep. 
And so then the bigger guy should be what? Negative 10. So let's put the negative 10. And notice this has x, y. Yep. So this should have x, y. Yep. And so should the 3 so that they can combine like terms, right? And do your chopping. What does this side have in common? 5x. 5x, which means with? x minus 2x. I mean, minus 2y. Yep. Yeah. Plus sign comes down. Yeah. What do these guys have in common? 3. Three. Anything else? Y. A y. So when you take that out, what do you get? You get x minus 2. X minus 2, but an extra y, right? Yeah, 2y. Yep. There you go. Do they match? Yes, ma'am. So you get x minus 2y and 5x plus 3y. So nothing changes. The letters just kind of consequently happen like they do. Okay? So let's try to find those magic numbers. What is it? 54? 54. Oh gosh, what's the square root of 54? Come on. Square root of 54. I get 7 point something. So then 54. 27. Four does not work. Five does not work. I get nine. And seven does not work. So, do any of those add to give me 15? Remember, add to give me 15. Right. These guys won't add to give me, right? So, you, this is why it's important what this is telling me, right? It has to add to give me 15. Because I'll notice I can get 15 there, but I'd have to minus. I have to add, which means these are my guys. And then, this also tells me that those two guys are going to have the same sign. And since this is positive, then they're both going to have to be positive guys. And don't forget to use his variables. That's the only way you're going to combine to get 15xy is if both of these guys had xy. Yes, I did the same thing. I tried to take out 3y, and then notice that's too big inside. You're supposed to match this, right? Yep, yep. So you're going to have 3x plus 3y, and then uh, 2x plus 9y. Yep. Or x plus 3y, yeah, and then 2x plus 9y. You got it. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> now, these are the same thing, but remember when I talked about it in the other topic? If you have a negative in the front, they always like you to factor out the negative. But this has nothing else in common. So you're just going to factor out a negative 1 then. Which means that'll turn that to positive. It'll turn this guy to positive, And then it'll turn the last guy into a negative. And so in your final answer, you'll have this negative 1 there. But your job is to figure out how to factor the rest of it. Okay? So do the magic number stuff again, but don't consider this. This is just going to come down to your final answer. 18. 18, yep. So 18, 9, and 6. 
So which pair? Six times three. Yep. So then I'm gonna write two x squared, and then I'm gonna write three x and six x and the minus nine. But what signs should go in there? Uh, you want a positive, so you're gonna be minus three x plus six x. You got it. And then chop it up. And then these guys have what in common? Three in common. Three. So you end up with two x and negative three. So then you got two x negative three. And then x plus three. And then x plus three. You got it. Negative one outside. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the little guy from the beginning, right? Try the next one. I forgot to unpause it. <laughs> So we'll just leave that there. But we talked about it out loud. We multiplied these, got 70, factored out our negative, figured out they're subtracting to give us 3, so we used 10 and 7, and then did, of course, the grouping, and then didn't forget to bring down our negative 1. Okay, last topic in this video. So this one's a little weird. There's only two terms here. You see one big fat symbol in the middle. That's it. There's only two terms here. So you are not going to be doing AC method. All you're going to do is factor out the greatest common factor. Because we don't even know the special formulas yet, right, for two terms. So we can't do that. The only thing we can do right now today is factor out the greatest common factor. Now, they do have a 4x plus 1 in common. Bless you. Don't they have a 4x plus 1 in common? Yeah, because it's squared on mm -hmm. that side. But how many of those can I take out? You only can, uh, two, two. You only can take out one. Correct, because this one only has one. one. Right Good. Yeah. So if I took out one of them, I'm going to put a giant parenthesis just for my visual effect, right? If I took out one of them, what would I have left in this term? You're going to have five times 4x plus 1. Correct. And then if I took out the 1 over here... You're going to have 7 times 2x plus 3. Correct. And that's it. Now, Alex, though, wants you to simplify this. Wow. Okay? They don't want you to type in all of this junk. So we have to actually simplify what's inside of there. So if I distribute my 5... I would get 20x plus 5. And if I distributed the 7? 14x plus 21. Mm -hmm. And then just combine your like terms. So that would give me 34x plus 26. Uh-oh. It says factor completely. Is this thing factored completely? No. No, because they can both be divided by something, can't yeah, they? Yeah. So then we have to do that. I like to put the number in the front. So what number can they both be divided by? Two. I think so. 34 divided by 2 is 17. And 26 divided by 2 is 13. And 17 and 13 don't have anything else in common, right? No. So if we factor out that 2, we would have 17x and a positive 13. Okay, you just like the two in the front instead of in the middle. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. No. I'm going to write a little note here. It's probably not even that big of a deal because I know the instructor that's over that was over there. That person is really dramatic, so <laughs> they call the cops all the time. It's crazy. I don't, I don't see the point, but okay, whatever. I've had people step up to me like they wanted to fight me and just been like, um, I think you need to leave the class, and they do, but. This one will like call the cops and everything, you know what I mean? So it's different. Let me see okay. If I'm right. okay. 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 
so, so first thing you're gonna do two first, people, right? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's bring the five on down first. And get no, it. first figure out what they have okay, in common. We got X plus eight in common. X plus eight, and yeah. how many? And we got one. No. Three of them. This one has three, this one has four, so the most I can take is three. Okay. Right? Always right. go with the lower exponent. Okay. Then they have two X plus nine, but how many can I take? Three of them. Only three. Okay, okay, I so I put my big parentheses. I'm still going to have the 5, but I took all three of these guys out. So no more x plus 8s. But I do still have one more oh, 2x plus 9, right? Because I took out three of them, but there's four, right? So I still have one left. I'm going to put my minus sign. Now I took out two, I'm sorry, I took out three x plus 8s, right? But I have four, don't I? Yeah. So I'm going to have one still left. And finally, I took out three 2x plus 9s. That means all three of these guys are out, right? So we can close so, the big parentheses. Go ahead. I'm just, I'm just trying to wrap Process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you, you're doing the side by side. So you took, okay, when you took the three out, you're taking that. So the five is. Remember the little trick I showed you? If, when Once you figure out what the GCF is, you could put that underneath each term. To help you figure out what's what going to be saying. stuck yeah. in the parentheses. Okay. So I could have put this common factor, the thing that's right here, yeah. I could have put it underneath each one. And then you'll notice all of those wipe out. And these wipe out, but you would still have one left. This would wipe out, but you'd have one left. Yeah. These would completely wipe each other out. Okay. So you have five left, but then you had one of those left still. You have your minus sign, and then you still have one of those left. Okay, I got you on that. I was just kind of, I got confused on what stays on the outside, what goes on the inside. Right. Now this GCF stuff is going to stay right there. Yeah, see, that's what I'm going to check. That's what you mean. But then I got to multiply all multiply, these things. Right, right. That's what I missed the outside. So you got 10x plus 40. 45. Mm -hmm. And then what's multiplying there? That's a negative 1. Mm -hmm. yeah. So negative 1x and negative 8. Yeah, minus 8. Positive 37. And those guys don't have anything in common, so I don't have to do what I did up there. This is the final answer. If these guys had something in common, I would have to factor it out, right? And then put the leftovers, just like I did here. They had something in common, I had to factor it out to the front and put the left. Right. If it were 36, then yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's always going to stay like that. When you break it down, when you factor out what you have left over, mm -hmm. like your x, x plus 8 cubed and your 2x plus mm -hmm. 9 cubed, that's always That's what gonna, you were taking the common thing out. The common thing is always going to remain. It's going to stay. Mm -hmm. okay, 